Good day, everyone. So this is question document examination, lecture series, part one. So what is a document? A document is any material that contains marks, symbols, or signs, either visible, partially visible, or invisible, that may presently or ultimately convey a meaning or message to someone. So any material, meaning uh, it's not limited only to paper, wood, or rock. So it could be any material, okay? Either paper, wood, rock, blackboard, etc. Okay, and it contains marks, okay? Symbols, signs, either visible or visible to the naked eye, partially visible or invisible, uh, because um, the author of the writing used an invisible ink, and of course. The third element that may presently or ultimately convey a meaning or message uh, to someone, okay, as long as the material that contain the marks, uh, symbol signs, um, convey a meaning or message to someone, it is a document, okay. So, a document may be in the form of what, uh, written in pencil, okay, ink writing, typewriting or printing on paper. And you all know this, the term document came from the Latin word documentum, which means lesson or example. And it may have been derived also from the French word docere, or sometimes uh, they pronounce this as docere, which means to teach. So next we have here the legal definitions of a document. So as held in the case of People versus Moreno, it was held there that a document is any written document which a right is established or an obligation is extinguished. So example of a document by which a right is established is a deed of sale, okay? Because there's a uh, transfer of a right here in a deed of sale. Or obligation is extinguished, uh, maybe a contract, okay? Or a deed of the nation, whereby uh, it's stated here that such obligation is extinguished already. And second is the people versus Niloskin. It is every deed or instrument executed by a person by which some disposition or agreement is proved, evidence, uh, or set forth. So one good example is a contract, okay? Either um, employment contract, because in an um, employment contract, uh, there's an a disposition or agreement Okay, that is uh, set forth there in a contract and it can be used as an evidence and it can be proved. Also a contract of marriage, okay? The, your contract of marriage is your proof of marriage. It can be proved. It can be used as evidence that you are married, okay? So that's in the case of people versus near the skin. So again, we have here the kinds of document, public, official, private, and commercial document. So again, public document, a document created, executed, issued by a public official in response to, to the exigencies of the public service or in the execution of which a public uh, official intervened. Okay, so this is the definition of a public document as held in U.S. versus Asensi. Okay, and of course public document, they are um, produced by virtue of office of a public officer. Okay. Um, no, no. A public document um, becomes part of public record. Um, it is open to the public and it, it embodies the official act of a public officer. Um, like uh, decisions, resolutions, uh, administrative orders or even marriage contracts that are examples okay of an official act of a public officer so again public document first definition embodies the official act of a public officer just like uh, decisions resolutions administrative orders and marriage contracts well in the second definition of public document it is a document that is uh, notarized by a notary public or a competent public official with solemnities required by law. Okay, Cacneo versus Baines. So, 
not all lawyers are notary public, but all notary public are lawyers. What does uh, this mean? It means that um, if you pass the bar, bar, okay, it does not automatically vest you the right to notarize a document. Why? Because you need to apply first, okay, for commission uh, in the RTC. Okay, and as a requirement, all notary public uh, should be a lawyer. Okay, dili pwede ang mga citizens, good standing, and jurist doctor. So, the notary public, one of the requirements of the notary public is that uh, you should be a lawyer. Okay, so official document as held in US versus Asensi again. It is a document by which is issued by a public official in the exercise of the functions of office. There's an official document. An official document is also a public document and it falls within the larger class called a public document. Okay. So they are public documents that are produced by virtue of office of a public officer. And these documents are authenticated they are verified. For examples of official documents, we have uh, NBI clearance, police clearance, barangay clearance, and even transcript of records issued by state universities and colleges. Okay. And all official documents are public documents, but not all public documents are official documents. What do you mean by this? Okay, let's just say that not all official documents are notarized, okay? So that's the only difference. Not all official documents are notarized. Like a barangay clearance that does not need a notarization to become uh, a public document, okay? Uh, NBI clearance, okay? Does not require um, notarization. Also a PNP clearance, okay? That's why all official documents are public documents, but not all public documents. Are official documents because in public documents, um, num the second definition, diba, is a document notarized by a notary public is considered as a public document. Okay. So kinds of document, uh, private document. So as held in U.S. versus Orera, every deed or instrument executed by a private person without the intervention of a notary public or of any person legally authorized by which the document, some disposition or agreement is proved, evidence or set forth. What are examples of private documents? We have letters, okay, plus cards, and deed of sales that are not notarized, okay? Pwede rin makamagamag deed of sale, hindi rin may ipanotaryo, okay? So it's considered as a private document, but if even na ipanotaryo na ang deed of sale, then it will become a public document. Okay, second definition of the public document. And then commercial document, the last one. It is any instrument defined and regulated by the Code of Commerce, okay, or any other commercial laws. For examples of commercial document, you have commercial checks, um, sales receipts, deposit, and withdrawal, uh, withdrawal slips. Okay, because um, they are defined and regulated by the Code of Commerce. Okay, and I like to add um, electronic document. Okay, electronic document. Um, examples of electronic document. Um, document, digital, digital document. You know, Microsoft Word a document. That's considered as a, doc a document na. Okay. Um, what may not constitute as a document? So according to the Supreme Court, the following does not constitute a document, a draft of the municipal payroll, okay, which was not yet approved, wala pa nasainan. Mere blank forms of official documents, okay, spaces of which are not filled up. It's an open document, puro blank, wala pa na filled up. It's not considered as a document, as held by the Supreme Court. And pamphlets of books, which do not evidence any disposition or agreement, are not documents, uh, but are considered mere merchandises. Okay, that's in the case of people versus Agnes. Next, we have peer question document. 
So you all know this. Because in document, of course, it's a document uh, that is under scrutiny, under investigation, and it is being examined. Meaning under scrutiny, it is being examined. Why? Because it is being questioned as to its originality, authenticity, authorship, source, and genuineness. Therefore, it is placed under scrutiny or examination to determine um, whether or not it is disputed. Okay. So, the question document, um, there is doubt. Okay. It is in dispute. So, that's why it is. I check me, Musha. I check. It is subject to examination to know the truth whether uh, this is original whether this is fake whether this is authentic etc okay it's a question document and how do we distinguish this from disputed document so in disputed document it has controversy okay controversy giagawan okay there's an argument involved as to the veracity of this document and it is a condition, disputed document, it is a condition in which two or more persons argue with each other regarding that document. Okay, remember, keywords. Um, question document, there is doubt. Gidudahan, that's why you examine um, document. Okay, and disputed document, there is a controversy. Wala siya examine but uh, there's a condition in which two or more persons argue okay, with each other regarding that uh, document. That's why uh, a disputed document is always a question document, while a question document is not always a disputed document. So why? Because not all documents we examine has a controversy. For example, na ini baya ni magutang. 1,000. So, imong gicheck ang paper. Igaduda ka whether uh, this is fake. Is this counterfeit bill? Or a genuine money? Okay? A real bank note. So, imong check. So, there is doubt. Gadoubt ka. Nga piki ba to siya? Or original. So, you question. So, that's question document. Okay? And a bank note is considered a document, diba? By definition. So, imong siyang question. So, wala'y controversy, ha? So, okay, pag check nyo mo, ah, okay, ready, ay, imgi komot, nani, buka. Imgi check, ang uh, kuan, security features, it's okay. So, no problem, okay? So, that's um, question document. There is doubt, ha? However, if disputed document, gi question, na Okay, gi question, ha? Na na'y controversy, gi lalisa na. Yung document, uy! Piki mani, et cetera. Then, ang pikas po, may ingon nga, dili, uy, dili na siya piki. Okay? So, there's a condition in which two or more persons argue with each other regarding a certain document, like the banknote. Okay? In my example. So, therefore, again, a disputed document is therefore always presumed a question document. Why? Because a disputed document, there's a controversy naman. Okay, well, a question document is not always a disputed document. Okay, what if? Yeah, imurang gi question nga, pick to or dili, then tinuod di ay. So, there's no controversy. Therefore, a question document is not always a disputed document. Okay, very easy. Next is question document examination. What is question document examination? So, it is the term or a term used to refer to the act of making a close and critical critical study of any document which is question disputed or attack necessary to discover the facts about them so it is the examination okay of a question document or a disputed document to discover the truth okay or the facts about them whether uh, they are authentic genuine original okay so that's question document examination and we have two division of question document examination. The criminalistic examination and the handwriting investigation analysis or analysis. So in criminalistic examination, this involves the detection of forgery, erasure, alteration, or obliteration of 
documents. While in handwriting investigation or analysis, this is more focused in determining the author of the handwriting. So keywords, okay, criminal examination involves the detection of forgery, erasure, alteration, or obliteration. Okay, forge, na erase, na ginuagan, okay, na tabunan, obliteration of documents. So criminal examination, criminalistics examination is usually done in the laboratory. Okay, you will use um, equipments, tools, and chemicals to detect uh, forgery, erasure, alterations, or obliterations of documents. And according to Dr. Wilson Harrison, a noted British examiner of question documents, said that an intelligent police investigator can detect almost 75% of all forgeries okay, by a careful inspection of a document with a simple magnifiers and measuring tools, a protractor and a magnifying glass. So the examination of the document in forensics laboratory is also a scientific procedure which can be learned in a very short time. Okay, so that's from the words of Dr. Wilson Harrison, a British examiner of question documents. So let's go to handwriting investigation. So keywords, handwriting investigation analysis. This is to find out who is the author of handwriting. So the focus is in determining the author of handwriting. And this is the most, the more difficult uh, procedure and requires long study and experience. Okay. So again, two divisions of question document, examination, criminalistic examination, and handwriting investigation. Uh, and or analysis. So we have here the aspects of question document examination. Number one, the handwriting examination or graphology or grapho analysis. So it includes the examination of signatures for initials, the examination of anonymous letters. In sabani, saning sigisulat aning anonymous letters, mga death threats ini. Then hand printing examination. Then second aspect is the examination of uh, typewritings. So dili kay handwriting ra, okay? Ang question document examination, but it includes examination of typewritings uh, and type prints, um, inks, okay? And examination of erasures, alterations, or obliterations, and more. Okay, so it includes detection of alteration, decipherment of erase writings, like na yung panas dra. So, it was decipherment of that uh, erase writings. O unsa sa itong yung panas. Then, restoration of the ob obliterated writings. Okay? So, question document examination involves detection of alteration, decipherment of erase writings, and restoration of obliterated writings. And number five, counterfeiting. So, it involves, again, examination of currency bills and coins okay to determine if it's counterfeit okay or genuine and also examination of fake documents like a land title maybe it's fake or your certificate of registration maybe fake okay so question documents include that okay examination and we have the miscellaneous aspects um, determination of age of documents whether uh, this is an ancient document already whether um, this is a contemporary document, etc. And then identification of stamps. And what is the purpose of question document examination? Of course, to reveal and discover the identity of the author. Is someone in author and in anonymous letter? The true contents of the document. Okay. So now obliteration. Instead of 1 million, I mean 100,000. Itara, na panas, or na dungag, ito. So, the true contents of the document, na determine yun. So, check, na pang So, na determine yun. Uh, ah, 1 million good day ang tinood na amount ano yun, check, not 100,000. And, origin of the instrument or paper used in the making of document. And alterations or erasures which have been made. Sa dapit ang erase, sa dapit ang gipang usob dere. Then, of course, to discover, the, to reveal whether uh, the document is authentic or not. 
So we have here the scientific examination of question document examination. So number one, analysis, second, comparison, and third, evaluation. Short for ACE, okay, ACE. Analysis, comparison, evaluation, ACE. So analysis, what's analysis? It is the recognition of characteristics of the handwriting of the author, characteristics of his handwriting. So properties or characteristics are observed, measured, and determined. So the first step is to analyze the known writing sample, okay? the known standard, okay? either requested standard or dictated standard and collected standard. For the distinctive, um, for the distinctive characteristics. So, characteristic, distinctive characteristic is defined as a quality or characteristic that is unique to a person. So, the examiner, the question document examiner, looks for unique qualities such as letter and word spacing, letter size, slant. Uh, of letters and proportionality regarding the size, degree, and intensity of letters and other individual characteristics of the handwriting of such person. So, as a question document examiner, i-check na mo ang baseline. Whether iyang sinulatan, straight ra, patag, straight ra, like Jim Patrick Sison, or pa-up Jim Patrick Sison, like nahiwi ba? Or pa-down, pa-down iyang agi. Then, imo pong i-determine ang slant of letter. Okay? During analysis, imo i-determine ang baseline, whether straight siya musulat, uh, pa-up or pa-down. Then, slant of the letters, whether pa-left pa iyang slant or pa-right iyang slant or straight ra. Okay? Straight ra iyang pagsulat. So, imo i-determine. Okay? And then, the letter size. Kung sa kadaka siya musulat, like large, medium, or small. Okay, imo nang i-analyze. Okay. Then word spacing, whether um kaning nay two words like Jim Patrick. So, iya ra bang gikwan? Close together ba ang iyang pagsulat or na by space, wide apart or normal ra nga spacing. Or dako kayo nga pag space, wide apart like Jim then laptop ka mo. Mga pila ka centimeters usa ka ni Patrick. Ya na, di ba? So, as a question document examiner, uh, you should know this, okay? The baseline, stand of letter, letter size, word spacing. And of course, letter formation, whether ang iyang letter ay, kay na ay dot, kay usually ang uban, wala may dot, or na a shade dot, or even if na ay dot, but with style, na, na pa heart heart iyang katong dot, heart or circle yun na dot, not the typical dot na uh, so na siya design so that's um, analysis okay you have you analyze the known writing sample with regards to the baseline the sum of letter uh, letter size word spacing and letter formation next is the comparison so it is a complete comparison of all characteristics okay properties or characteristics of the unknown items determined through analysis are compared with familiar or recorded properties with known items. So the second step, okay, so after the analysis, the unknown and unknown items are compared. Okay, katong unknown, the question document, and the, the standard. So you will compare that. So the second step is to differentiate the elements from known sample, okay, the requested standard or the collected standard. To those of the unknown sample, the question document. So, imo na siyang i-compare o nabay similarities, nabay dissimilarities. Ang letter ba sa unknown sample? Ang letter size sa unknown sample? Small ba? Ang letter size sa known sample or known standard? The request is under. Is small ba? Medium or large? Okay. So, what if ang letter size sa unknown sample is small? Small lang. Then si si no si unknown sample kay large, so there's the similarities na, okay? So there's you will compare the question and the known sample, the standard. Okay, so that's step two. 
And step three is the evaluation. The conclusion. Man, eh, conclusion ni mo as the question document exam examiner. So it's the correct interpretation of characteristics. The similarities or the similarities in property or characteristics that have been certain value of core identification is determined by their likelihood or occurrence. So this is the final step. This is to evaluate the dissimilarities, similarities in the known and unknown samples, the question document and the standard. While differences are good indication of a non-match, the gansilang differences, like C known, uh, large yang letter size, then C unknown, small yang letter size, then um, letter formation is different. Ang I ni koan, dili siya mo butang period. Ang I ni, ni question document kay nay heart heart or circle circle ba ang letter ay yang dot okay so the examiner must make a judgment in each case by evaluating the totality of documents dili kay katura ang imong i analyze dili usa ka dissimilarity ba tanan na by similarities ani nila tanan or dissimilarities okay so as a question document examiner you look for differences or similarities in the handwriting Okay, in the question and in the standard. So example, uh, as you say, na compare na nimo, uh, you will uh, write there in your report that uh, shape of the upper loop of letter J, shape, there are differences between the shape of the upper loop of capital J. There's a difference between the shape of the lower loop of the capital J of the question and the uh, standard. Etc. Okay, so this is how you evaluate. You look for the similarities and the similarities. Then you write down uh, your observation as to similarities and the similarities. Okay, so more likely evaluation is conclusion. Okay. So we have here instruments used in question document examination. So number one, we, uh, we have the stereoscopic microscope. So keywords, okay, the stereoscopic uh, microscope provides a three-dimensional view, okay, of a specimen. A stereo microscope magnification helps sort and visualize peripheral surfaces in three dimensions. That's why it provides three-dimensional view pag tanaw ni mo sa sa microscope, then di mong ikaan tong document kaya na kay na na ay question um, signature etc so 3D view ang imong gawain makita so that's stereoscopic uh, microscope or stereo microscope okay it provides three dimensional view of a specimen and stereo microscope magnification helps sort and visualize peripheral surfaces and three dimension which allows a thorough examination of the objects Okay, and we have next is the compound microscope. Okay, it uses two lenses, usara yang one, but uses two lenses, an objective lens and an ocular lens mounted at the opposite ends of a closed tube. What? What's the purpose of that? To provide a greater magnification. Okay, that than is possible with a single lens. So dua ka lens niya for greater magnification. Okay, that's a compound microscope. Okay, and also on the gamut based on my research, Karan, is the digital microscope called the MI uh, scope or my scope. Okay, it is a very high end digital microscope and it has a lot of capabilities. It allows us to hold, okay, imurang gunito ang microscope to hold that over a document and capture the image right in the computer. So pag ano mo sa microscope, yung i-capture ang image, mapunta dahil sa imong computer. Then, dito na yung analyze. Klaro ka yun. Okay, dako. Enlarge na. Then it's klaro. So dito na yung compare ang similarities and the similarities of the question document and the standard document. So that's the beauty of it. Okay, again, stereoscopic microscope, microscope provides a three-dimensional view, 3D view. Compound microscope Okay, provides greater magnification. Why? Because it uses two lenses. Okay. And digital microscope. It's high-end. Imurang picturan, 
you use that microscope, you hold that, that microscope over the document and capture a picture then punta na sa imong uh, computer or laptop. Okay? And mas taro. Taro po. Um, we have here the handwriting protractor. Of course, if mag, uh, mag-evaluate ka sa imong evidence. Okay? If mag-evaluate ka, you will use a handwriting protractor to determine the slope sa iyang handwriting. Um, a handwriting protractor is an instrument for measuring angles. Mga angles sa iyang handwriting. Slope, pa, uh, pa left ba? Um, pa right ba? Or straight lang ba? Okay? With the user. Used to measure mark out angles. Mga angles. So that's how you do it using a handwriting uh, protractor. Next, we have the ultraviolet lamp. So, of course, for detection of counterfeited bills, you will use an ultraviolet lamp. It's very basic. Okay? And also, it can actually be used to detect security features of a qualified documents. Okay? UV lamp ganit for detection of counterfeited bills and also to detect security features of a uh, qualified document. Next, we have the transmitted light microscope. So a transmitted light microscope uses light that passes through a condenser into an adjustable aperture, then through the sample into series of lenses to the eyepiece. So it's a microscope, but na yung transmitted light, gikan sa ilalum. Okay, so pag panan mo, mas klaro. And transmitted light is typically used for two types of samples. Objects that are transparent. Alangan. So that's why na light. Para, it can, uh, it, that's why transmitted light is used for two different uh, types of samples. The objects that are transparent or semi-transparent for those that, that are opaque and require backlighting. Okay? Requires backlighting for measurements. So na sila lumagagi ang transmitted light microscope. Okay? As you can see in the picture. And then, yes, the forensic optical uh, comparator. It is a project magnified images of parts onto a glass screen using illumination sources, lenses, and mirrors for the primary purpose, making 2D measurements. So it gives clear, crisp, magnified images without distortion. And it allows for a side-by-side -side examination of fingerprints or printed materials. So it's dili rapang fingerprints, but also for printed materials. So it gives magnified images without distortion. So just like in this picture, but it's a fingerprint. So you just compare from left to right. So if you call document examiner, I'm going to compare a question and the uh, um, requested standard. So using this forensic optical comparator. And we have this electrostatic detection device, okay? It is used to visualize indentations, okay? Mga, paano, eh? mga indentations. So it helps you visualize mga apply ra chemicals, etc. Then mo appear na tong mga indent, na indent gani, na lamak. Okay? So it reveals uh, any indentations. Okay, that's an uh, electrostatic detection device. And the video spectral comparator. This is used to analyze inks, pang inks na punisha. Okay, so this is done by looking at them under different lighting conditions where some wavelengths of light are blocked. Okay, so yang i analyze ang inks to see whether they are uh, the same or different. So ang, ang ink aning bag ung gidungag, same ba aning karaana nga sinulatan. Okay, whether um, pareha ba sila gigamit nga ball pen? Pandawa or HBW the winning sa yana. So that's video spectral comparator. It compares, analyzes inks and see whether they are the same or different. Tapos si la and pull pen dito ng gigamit atong fake nga atong bidungagan tong alteration. Okay, pandawa to or JTEC yana. So that's video spectral comparator. Thin layer chromatography. Okay, it is used to do a more thorough analysis of ink. Okay, so gamita na ni chemicals ang inks. Okay, to determine if um, 
sa panda ba ni nga bullpen, sa SB na Julio ba ni nga bullpen, sa GTEC ba ni nga bullpen. Ayan. Okay. So, what's the difference between a 10 layer and the video spectral uh, comparator? In video uh, spectral comparator, uh, this is done by looking at the inks under the different lighting conditions uh, where some wavelengths of light are blocked. While in 10 layer chromatography, gagamit siya chemicals. Okay? Chemicals. Parayan yung sa uh, picture. And infrared reflectance uh, spectroscopy for ano po ni? pencil marks. Okay? Pencil marks. Ganiha sa ink now for uh, pencil marks so this can be done clearly even if the uh, writing has been erased like nagsulat ka pencil but nakagi erase so gamitan na siya infrared reflectance spectroscopy makita to siya ang sa time erase so because uh, pencils are made of graphite which is a form of carbon and this absorbs infrared light well so dali around sa pen then magnifying lens is a magnifying glass is a convex lens that used to produce a magnified image of an object. Okay, so you check the magnifying lens. And last, the camera with macro lens. Would you need this? Because you need to capture the handwriting sample and the question uh, document and enlarge them uh, for part presentation. So dito ka, imong ikwan imong findings dito, similarities and the similarities. So you need to picture, of course, para for your court presentation. So you need a camera with macro lens, okay, para ma enlarge um, uh, picture. Okay, so thank you for listening. Have a good day.